Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mambo number five. All right, guys. Time for a little throwback music to get us kicked off today for happy hour. Everybody in the club. All right, you guys know what to do. It's happy hour. We got to give folks a few minutes to get in the room. I want to know, what are you drinking? Where are you? If you're a newbie, three stars. We're in week nine. You guys know the drill. Woo! In my life. Guys, it's Thursday, May 21st, and it's over. The work day is done. It's time to put something in your glass. You're going to be right here hanging out with us. We're going to talk some wine. We're going to have some fun. I'm going to dance to Mambo number five. You guys have a little bit of time to get something in your glass. If you're running behind, we're going to let folks get in the room. Let's see who's already here with us. Pam checking in early. Navasota drinking Mary Ruth. I love it. I haven't heard Navasota in a while. Greg, so good to see you again, man. Phil, Phil and Monica, normally from Lake Jackson, but up in Fred today. Okay, having some 19 High Plains Rosé. Hope the drive treated you well. It's nice and sunny today, very warm. I think there's some nice green out that way, the drive I took the other day. Chris, Lake LBJ, man, you guys are traveling right now, and I am jealous, Chris, because I want to be on the lake. 15 Petit Verdot from High Estate, just one vintage different from what I'm drinking today. Mary having some pick pool in Wimberley. Mary, that is one of my favorite Texas wines, not going to lie. Lost Straw Cellars pick pool, guys. And yes, William Chris is still working on getting theirs bottled. We are going to have a pick pool from William Chris. Don't tell anybody. And by that, I mean tell everybody. Um, love it. Alta, happy Thursday from Frisco. Having some 17 Zin. Woo! Yeah, Greg, I feel you. Got to work for that wine budget. Guys, we're giving folks a few more minutes to get in here. And this song to finish. By my side. Anybody else remember every single word? It's like one of those easy to sing along songs. A little bit of Sandra in the sun. Monica all night long. A little bit of you makes me a man. All right, guys. We are going to have folks continue to join us today, but I want to leave plenty of time and room to hang out with my friend Mandy, who is joining us again today. Um, we are going to talk about chillable reds because it is hot outside. I don't know if y'all are feeling this too, but it's like somebody took a massive shower outside and like just left the whole world like steamy and it's really gross and i wish the humidity would go away but i am not complaining about the sunshine or the warm temperatures i love summer i'm from austin i get it like this is what we do this time of year but doesn't mean i have to like the humidity okay this freaking steam bath situation can just go home um, all right, guys. Um, good to see many of you. Brian, um, trying something new, some Drew and Macon Viage. All right, look at you branching out, having some white berg. I love it. Um, okay, guys, let's say hi to our special guest today, really quickly. Mandy, what's up, friend? Hey, how are you? I, I also have a special guest too. Lucille's back. Ah, oh, Lucille. Yeah. I freaking love dogs. She, she's looking, I know she's a little feisty when we were getting prepped for the show. She's calmed down a little bit, huh? Yeah, she has uh, an on and off switch, and that's basically it. Uh, there's no in-between, so we are currently in an off. <laughs> I love it. Is it zero or 100? Yeah. I, I can totally relate. <laughs> um, so, friend, where are you and what are you drinking right now? So, I am in uh, Austin, Texas, in my little COVID compound. COVID free compound, I should say. And I'm drinking a little um, Trousseau from uh, Eastern France in a region uh, in the Europe. Uh, and the specific region in the Europe is the Arbois. 
so we actually covered uh, the Jura earlier this week. Um, so I love that you are showcasing a wine from such a region. So all of our viewers out there, if you guys tuned in that episode, hopefully you did. If you didn't, go back and look. I taught you where it was located. And Trousseau was one of the grapes we talked about. You know, one of those beautiful, elegant, amazing red wines from that region. Look at that color. Oh, my gosh. It's beautiful. Cheers, yeah. friend. I'm so glad Cheers. you're here today. Mm. Mm. All right, friend. I'm going to bring you back for the wine nerd section and talk chillable reds. I'll see you in just a little bit. Um, all right. Who else has shown up since we got kicked off? Brian. Um, I think I already said hi to Ken in San Antonio drinking wine. Yes, I'm glad to hear that. Maybe tell us a little more about that wine that you're drinking, Ken. We'd love to learn. Tina, um, already loving Chillable Reds. Oh, started to love Chillable Reds. I love that new concept. Well, we're going to talk all about it today, and Mandy's going to give us all kinds of pointers, so get ready to take notes, guys. Um, Chris is in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, having Sangio Rosé. I love it. Um Okay, guys, Lauren is having a pina colada. I need to be on that bandwagon. Jeff and Kim, um, good to – oh, you're going to be with us in just a little bit in Round Rock. I love it. Hey, guys, I get it. Some of us are going back to work right now. There's been a little transition, taking folks a little longer to get online. That's okay. We're still going to be here every day, 5 o'clock, for you to mark the end of your work day. So let's get started. Um, guys, I feel lucky because part of my job is to share library wines with you. Tough job, right? Like, okay, D, we're going to really need you to drink this aged wine that we have in the library. Poor me. So let's talk about this beauty. Um, first of all, Petit Verdo, high estate, Texas Hill Country. All right, guys. Mm -hmm. And check out that vintage. Can y'all see that? 2014. So you know, a lot of times, especially as a young, younger winery, younger producer, right? We just started in 08 and the property in 2010. So like, guys, that that means a 14 is kind of nice, um, especially when we start to talk about something like Petit Verdot, because Petit Verdot, usually in Bordeaux blends, because that's where it got its fame from, Petit Verdot is usually anywhere between like one and 3% of a Bordeaux blend in France. So like really tiny amounts. And that's because it is really concentrated. It has a lot of a lot of things. It has a lot of acidity. It has a lot of tannin. It has a lot of flavor. And if you use more than just a little bit, it can overpower your blend. Now, one thing we've learned about American wine drinkers is we like the punch. We like the power. We like the intensity. And so California winemakers started thinking about that and we're like, oh my gosh, this grape, Petit Verdot, packs a punch. It's intense in a lot of ways and I think consumers are gonna like it. And so the trend for 100% Petit Verdot wines really got kicked off in California. And a lot of folks, because it grows well here in Texas, are starting to do that here, including William Chris. And we've been making Petit Verdot for quite a while on the highest state. And I will say, while it is one of our smaller production wines, it tends to be a wine club favorite. So those of you out there, y'all know highest state Petit Verdot. If you know, you know, right? Is How's that go? I, I, Y, K, if you know, you know, I, Y, K, Y, K, if you know, you know. Yeah, y'all learn that new little acronym through all this. Um, so let's talk about it, guys. Black cherry, plum, maybe a little bit of like that garrigue, that like sage green herb note. Yep. All those things on the palate, except it's got a really nice line of acidity that's making me salivate and slurp my saliva. Wow. Um, so a lot of those fruits came up real tart on the palate. Like I got that that black cherry and that plum, but all that acidity really comes across as a really tart fruit note. Um, also grip. Lots of tannin, guys. Petit Verdot, this is a big wine. There are smaller berries, so there's a smaller skin to juice ratio, which leads to more tannin, which means, let's switch to talking about food here. Guys, I want grilled steak. I want lamb kebabs. I want a Wagyu beef burger, like on the grill, char on the charcoal grill, okay? All this grip and acidity 
You want the smoke, the fattiness, the goodness that comes from grilling meats to match with the tannin here and to match with the acidity. And that's really going to make the fruit in this wine come out even more. So the savoriness of the meat going to really make that fruit sing. If you can't tell, I am ready for grilling. And actually tomorrow we are going to talk about wines for grilling. Um, so we'll talk about that at the end of the episode. But this is actually a wine that I would want if I'm going to grill a lot of awesome meat. So um, yes, deep purple, guys. This color, it's it's got all, everything, guys. Intense everything. Intense color, intense tannin, intense acidity. Um, and over the years, this is going to start to take on those tertiary notes. So because it's so high in tannin and acid, Petit Verdot is very ageable. And this is even young. It's a six, it's a what, 14, I said. So at about six years old, it's still got like, in my opinion, the way this is tasting eight, 10 more years, and it's going to be singing beautifully. And it'll start to take on some of those savory meaty notes, the older it gets. Cool. All right, guys, that's enough about Petit Verdot. Hopefully you guys know about it. If you don't, now you know. Um, let's bring my friend Mandy back up because it's time to talk chillable reds. Hey, friend. Hi. Hey, friend. <laughs> I love your dog so much, and <laughs> I am so sneaking close to getting one. Um, anybody out there, you know, knows about a puppy that I should be, you know, bringing home with me? Y'all let me know. Um, I want to give a, a little more proper introduction to my friend Mandy. Hopefully, you saw the previous episode um, that Mandy was on. But if not, Mandy is a sommelier here in Austin. Um, she has worked at many establishments here, has worked in a lot of different realms throughout the wine world, including for portfolios of wines. Um, she has worked in distribution. She's worked on the restaurant side. Um, she has founded ATX Psalms, which um, supports the ongoing education of the local wine industry uh, folks like myself. Um, I just thought there's a really cool sake class, and I'm really stoked to take that. Yeah. Um, and most recently, and we're, we'll talk about this a little at the end, she founded Austin Shift Meal um, to support folks who are either furloughed or, or have been laid off because of the COVID situation um, so that industry people who worked at restaurants and wineries and things like that can still get meals throughout the week to help them with um, being laid off. So really cool. And she's going to talk to you about ways you can get involved and help that out um, at the end. So Mandy, um, real quick. Remind folks, where are you from? And maybe let's tell them something new this time. Instead of how your wine journey got started, let's tell them what's your last meal on earth food and wine pairing? Ooh, okay. Um, but first, where you're originally from. Okay, I'm from, I'm from Dallas, third generation Texan. Uh, and I am a huge champagne lover. So it's gonna have to be some champagne salon for sure. She, she's going to, she's going to be one of my dinner dates here uh, for sure. Um, and, and then I think it's going to be like this seafood extravaganza. Um, definitely going to have some uni because I just love, I absolutely love Japanese Okaida uni, um, some lobster. Um, and then, yeah. And, and just, I'll just sit there with champagne and I'll just shuck oysters and and slurp them down and and the meal will not end for a while for very long okay so i have a key question here mm -hmm. on the champagne side if that's your last going out champagne what style of champagne are you looking for and um i love my very long lees extended champagne um and I, what i love about salon is the purity of it it's just from one tiny little region in champagne and they only make it in good years. So what you're getting is like the best of the best. It's incredible. Um, I will take a bottle or three of those. If anybody out there um, wants to buy Dee and Mandy a gift um, to celebrate, uh, you know, us kind of transitioning, hopefully towards being out of quarantine and reopening things slowly and is feeling generous um, and wants to buy us bottles of salon, we will not turn that down. Um, yes. Okay, guys, all kidding aside, I'm not really kidding, you should buy us some. Um, <laughs> let's talk chillable reds. Um, I'm gonna turn the mic over to you. I think this is such an apropos topic to be talking about. It's freaking 
a hundred degrees and a half. Um, hum uh, what is it? Heat index out here. I am sitting on camera sweating. Um, all for you guys, guys. I do it. I do it for the happy hour lovers out there. Um, talk to me. What, like, why are we talking chillable reds? What's up with this? Well, I mean, I think we're all familiar with the Franzia chillable red. That is not what I'm referring to here at all. Um, <laughs> here we are in Texas. No, listen, right? It's okay if that was your start. Franzia I mean, is a lot of people's thing. introduction to wine. And like, I think Mandy and I are both on the same page about this. Like, we all got to start somewhere. Absolutely. Totally. But I am talking about we live in Texas and we like to drink red wine, correct? Um, but it's just so hot. And to crack open a bottle of red that's been sitting out on your counter and it's probably 75 degrees, it's just, it's not not tasting right to me. It just, it needs some love from some temperature. Um, so here in Texas, most of us don't have cellars. And when you go to wineries, they have actual cellars where they're keeping the wine at about 60 degrees, sometimes a little bit lighter. So that's already, what, 15 degrees colder than our regular house where we store our wine. And then red wines that are lighter in body really love it even colder, between 50 and 55 degrees. So what I love to do is find those kind of lighter body style reds, throw them in the fridge for a little bit before I drink them. And they have that nice little touch of chill on them. And you get these different flavors and aroma. And it's not just something heavy on your palate. It's really lighter. It's brighter. And I love seeing the change in the wine too. So like, to me, you get more kind of earthy, spiced characteristics when it's colder. Um, and then when it warms up, you start seeing that fruit really pop and change and come out and develop. Um, so that's, that's also a fun pairing exercise when you're having a meal. So you could, you know, when you start out, you're having something a little bit lighter typically too. And so you have that crunchy, ch chill feeling to the red and then it warms up and it gets more richer and, and heavier as it warms up. So it starts changing and it can change with your meal as well. I love that. And I, I don't think I've, I personally have ever thought about the progression of when you chill a red wine. And I have noticed, like, you know, a lot of times they talk about if a wine's too cold, then the flavors are muted. But, and I, like, I'm thinking back on those times, it's true. Like there are par particular flavors or aromas in the wine that are muted, but I think you're right on. It's like a lot of the fruit character gets muted when it's super cold. But man, that like the earthiness and the minerality part of the wine is that's what's left. And so you get more of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a fun way to see two different things coming out of your wine. And I think a fun party trick, if you want to do this on your guests, is you take the same bottle of wine, get get two of them, put one in the fridge and chill it for a little bit, and then one room temperature and blind people on it and ask them which one they like better. And almost every single time people like the one that's been um, taken down to the proper temperature because that's what it's intended, you know? Like these wines are intended to be drank at a specific temperature. And unfortunately here in Texas, it's harder to do and we forget about it and we just get all excited about the wine and we crack it open. So we're talking a lot about like throwing the bottles in the fridge and stuff. Let's give like very practical steps here for folks. Um, how long do you recommend? Like what's a good kind of time to just always think if it's a light red, I, I'm going to put it in the fridge for how long? Like 30 minutes. You can just, just throw it in there for 30 minutes. Um, okay. If, I don't even, even your bigger reds, like what you're drinking. I think when I first, saw you pour it in your glass, I could see condensation. So you you chilled that down, didn't you? I did indeed, guys. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't do Petit Verdot. I cannot do Petit Verdot in freaking 100 degree heat index if this sucker did not start with a chill on it. So I like, honestly, I forgot a little bit late. Guys, I don't recommend this. So like, this is not a good pro tip, but in a pinch it can work. So maybe it is a pro tip. I was like, oh crap, I'm drinking PV today and I gotta be outside. I'm throwing this in the freezer. And yeah. so 
I, I threw this in the freezer. I only had about 10 minutes before I had to be out here, but like 10 minutes in the freezer, I mean, even just that little bit of time totally changes this wine. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, you can't screw it up, right? So if you get it too cold, we're in Texas, so it's going to be warmed up within a matter of minutes. So don't be afraid to throw it in and then let it start. Yes, you can. Absolutely. <laughs> For sure. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I love it. I mean, that's exactly what I was doing. I mean, like this very <laughs> much. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's just very much in line with what we're talking about with this PV that I'm drinking. Like big Napa cabs, guys. We are all drinking big Napa cabs way too warm, and it is gonna. I told you guys, I'm here to be your ambassador of pleasure. I've said that about a hundred times on this show. As your ambassador of pleasure, everybody. Please know you will find more pleasure in even that big Napa cab with just like 15 to 20 minutes in the fridge and it will totally blow your mind. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Big Napa cab, even that, yes. Now, when we're talking about chillable reds for the summer, that's probably not what Mandy was thinking about, but that is a good like practical tip in terms of enjoying your red wine just in general. So maybe let's dig a little deeper. When you were thinking chillable reds, what kinds of wines were you thinking about? So um, what really likes a nice chill is your more thinner skin, lighter bodied reds. So Trousseau, if you can see, you know, the color there, I mean, that's just slightly darker than some rosés out there, right? Um, Pinot Noir also falls in that camp. Gamay, if you find a Beaujolais, throw that puppy in the fridge, you know? Um, Trousseau, Plusard, Cinso uh, is another great one to have a nice little chill on it. Uh, That's who makes a lot of Cinso. These guys, guys, and y'all know I've been talking about that as like my boat wine since even before I got hired at William Chris. I was like in the interview process, they brought me out and they were like tasting me through the wines on the tasting menu. And I had our 17, I'll, I will never forget. I think it was our 17, well, maybe I will forget. I think it was our 16 actually. 16 La Straw Morved, maybe 17. They might've just switched the vintage. And, you know, they asked me my feedback, like, what did you think? How did it go? Any feedback on like the tasting or the wines? And I was like, guys, the one thing that I would change, and it's just the one small thing, we need to be chilling that Cinso before we serve it. And it will blow people's, and guys, that has been my boat wine at William Chris. So Cinso all the way. Oh, I want, I want one. I, you got to give me a bottle. <laughs> Lost Draw, Lost Draw Vineyards and So from William Chris. Guys, that is your, and there's a reason when we did that, um, guys, that collaboration with Craig Collins, the master psalm for the relief wine, there's a reason we went after Cinso. is 95% Cinso in that wine. Um, so it's perfect for the Texas summer. Um, okay, so you got Trousseau, Gamay, Pinot Noir, Poussard, Cinso. I'm starting to sense a little bit of a theme here. You talked about thin skins. These are lighter in color, usually lighter in body, usually, but also lower in tannin, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So there, I think yeah. I think that's just a big thing when we talk about heat and enjoying things outside. We don't always have like these perfect food pairings guys a lot of the high tannin wines that a lot of us drink those are intended as food wines i saw somebody ask that question yesterday when Lindsay was here like what's the difference between a wine that's just drinkable by itself as standalone versus one that's like better for food and all these that that um mandy is mentioning and i'm going to put these up on the screen so you guys don't forget them um are those kinds of wines that don't have a lot of tannin so yep. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling what you're putting out here, Mandy. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's, you want something lighter during the summertime, right? Like our, our food kind of changes a little bit during the summer. We go to more salads, colder things, cause we're just hot. So same, same with your red, you know, you can go with a little bit lighter, lighter style red. You don't have to just switch to white during the summertime. You can have a lighter style red wine and throw a chill on it and be outside and drink something cold. It feels great. I love that. Okay. I've got a couple of questions that I want to address here from practical sides. Brian asking, should you open the bottle before putting it in the fridge? It doesn't matter. Um, Ooh, one more fun tip about wine in the fridge. Um, I know this is a rare thing that probably doesn't happen to any of you, 
But if you're not able to finish the bottle at night or at some point during the day, close it, put it in the fridge, and it will last a lot longer than if you leave it out on the counter. That fridge will help keep your wine that's already been open stable. Preach, preach that. That's been my like gospel of wine storage, guys. Cause I, I like drinking like two or three different wines at a time. I get kind of bored just drinking glass after glass of the same wine. So I want to have like four or five open at a time so I can like third a glass this, half a glass that, and you know, like compare, contrast. And so if I have all these bottles open, I put the cork back in, I stick it in my fridge. Doesn't matter what color it is white, orange, pink, red. And then when you pull it out the next day or in two days or however many days, instead of letting the bottle come up to temperature, pour the glass or a half a glass or whatever you want, put the bottle immediately back in the fridge and let the glass come up to temperature if you want. Yeah. So I'm on Perfect. this. Perfect. Um, Leah's coming through with any reds that you would explicitly not recommend chilling. Living in Texas, we pretty much always put a chill on a red before dinner. So anything you're like, don't never do this? No, mm -mm. no, I, 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 and wine's such a personal thing too. We all, we all have our own likes and dislikes. You may not enjoy a chillable red. I don't know. I'm just happy you're drinking wine. So if you like having it cold, go for it. You know, like enjoy the wine the way you want to drink it. I love it. I love it. And I, and I see some of you saying like that, that, that tidbit, not necessarily helpful for you, especially if there are two of you drinking a bottle at a time, like those bottles don't always have a lot left over in them. We hear you. Um, but maybe this is your chance, especially if you're quarantined or whatever, you're having to stay at home, not going to go to the restaurant, like get a little fancy, open up three or four bottles at a time and compare them guys doing like, compare and contrast is how I taught my palate. When I do nothing, guys, gosh, four, I guess it's about four and a half years ago, I couldn't have told you the difference of between a cab and a Pinot Noir. I had no clue. And the only way that I learned on my palate was to open at least two bottles at a time and build all these Venn diagrams in my brain. Sometimes they were super similar wines. And so the Venn diagrams were like almost all, all the way overlapped. And sometimes they were two very different wines. And so there was like no middle section where they overlapped, um, but it starts to train your senses. So if you're if you're the point where you're finishing everything you open, maybe open more wine than you already are. I love start, that. <laughs> yeah, right? Like and explore more. <laughs> so you're hurting your first guys. All of you out there who are too used to finishing the entire bottle should be opening like three or four bottles at a time then, okay? If I can do it, you can do it. Um, I wanted to throw this out there. Um, guys, she gave you this beautiful list. Trousseau, Gamay, Pinot Noir, Plusard, Cinso. First of all, can I just talk about how awesome I love that like we talked about the Jura earlier this week and you you brought up two varieties. Guys, y'all should have learned this, the Jura wine nerd section. Trousseau and Plusard, guys, two reds from the Jura are so great to chill and drink. Um, I'm going to add your, uh, your, my Italian trifecta to this list. Yeah. Um, so I also recommend, um, some of these Italian reds that don't carry a lot of tannin either. So Dolcetto and Frappato fit the same profile that Mandy already shared where it's super light, um, no tannin, um, super great on a chill. Um, Barbera is also great. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit more full bodied and a little bit darker in color, but it is super fruit forward, has really good acidity and is great on a chill because there's really not a lot of tannin in Barbera. Barbera is just really delicious and easy. Um, so a little bit more full body to, for those of you like a little bit bigger reds, um, you can still chill and enjoy the heck out of Barbera because there's not a lot of tan in there. So there's your, uh, in addition to the ones that Mandy already did, check out the Italian trifecta there. Those are all three. I would try and source them from Italy, but there's been some really great producers of these wines um, in, the, in California as well. I think there might be um, a couple of Texas producers who are experimenting with some of these grapes, but um, for sure, for sure, check out the Italian versions and 
Um, yes, Chris. Chris is saying the uh, Chris Graham's the Corvin has become our friend. It is, guys. I, I, Mandy. I think you were one of the fellow people who won a Corvin the same day that I did. I did. Guys, the, the inventor of this Corvin came to Austin and did a industry facing kind of presentation, and there was a taste test because the whole purpose of Corvin is like you can't even tell if this wine's been sitting under Coravin and you know had wine taken out of it or versus a new bottle. Um, and Mandy and I, highly trained palates right here, guys. Both of us identified, high five, um, the the Coravin wine. Um, there are only four of us out of a, a room of like, I don't know, 30, 35, um, who correctly identified that wine and won a free Coravin. And I can't tell you guys it has been a life changing thing for me during quarantine. Yep. And I am corvinning into all the bottles. <laughs> so anyway, that's enough about us guys. Um, let's see, I'm gonna give all to this last question. What Trousseau would you recommend? Never had one before. You wanna show the label of the one that you're drinking? Sure. Oui. Let's see if we get that. Oui. Domaine du, du Bois. I can't, I, I can't even tell you where I got this. Um, I know, you know, places like Austin Wine Merchant will probably, if you go in there, they will probably have maybe at least one or two selections there. Um, but your smaller, more independent retailers will, will have some Trousseau or possibly Poussard, which are really fun and light. And you could throw scavia in for fun for Italian red chillables. Ooh, I didn't even think about scavia. That's that's a great pro tip right there, guys. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, we are 30 minutes in. Um, I'm going to play one round of this or that with Mandy just because I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Mandy, do you want – nope, I'm not even going to give you the choice. I'm going to give you the vacation version of this or that. We need to hear from you in the comments before we head out for the day, guys. The this or that for today is pina colada on the beach or whiskey in the mountains. Mm. And I'm going to give you a sec to think about that. I'm going to let everybody chime in in the comments, guys. Pina colada on the beach or whiskey in the mountains. And pour yourself a little bit more. We're cheersing ourselves to the end of Thursday, May 21. We are sliding closer into that holiday weekend. It's so close, guys. I can almost reach out and touch it. But I need to know, pina colada on the beach or whiskey in the mountains? Woo! Okay, I'm going to bring Mandy back up. Mandy, you got to go first. Pina okay. colada on the beach or whiskey in the mountains? I'm just, I'm not ready for this Texas heat yet. So take me to the mountains and let's drink some whiskey. I love it. I feel that. I understand that. I see where you're coming from. Let's check in on what other people are saying. Um, Brian, I'm going to answer that question in a little bit. Don't let me forget. But first up, Jamie, whiskey in the mountains, also while in a hot tub. Okay. Just, you know, upgrade us here. No big deal. As long as it's cold, though, like it's got to be like really cold plus hot tub plus whiskey. I feel you. Um, Rick says pina colada on the beach. Jeff, pina colada on the beach, no question. What is happening here? Guys, there's a lot of pina coladas. I love, hold on. Lauren, I'm drinking a pina colada pretending I'm on a beach. <laughs> hold on, did, did you get a kiddie pool in your backyard next to the sandbox? Because that sounds pretty great right now. I'm not going to lie. Um, Tina says, feel the burn, guys. Mountains and whiskey. I can hear you on that. Brian just says whiskey because it's stronger. Hey, we all have our reasons. That's great. Margaret's pina colada. Um, JR coming through. PC, she wants that pina colada. I love it. Ken's getting specific here. He wants Kentucky bourbon. Um, okay, Bill, don't rub it in. Um, are which I didn't catch. Which one are you going to be at? It, either one. Oh, he already told us. Pina colada on the beach. Monica loves the sun, the sand, and the weather. I am there with Monica. Monica, I feel you on that. Um, Lauren says, I do have a kitty pool with a bag. I knew it. 
I knew it. I love it. Um, that's so great, guys. This is the perfect um, note to leave on to answer. Um, whose question was that? Brian needed to know, guys. We're going to tell you this and remind you this tomorrow. This guy right here needs him a Memorial Day holiday. So you and I are both, all of us together collectively, going to take Monday off from happy hour because we are going to be happy houring out and about wherever we're going to be. Some of us, that might be right here where I am, um, in your front yard with your kiddie pool, in your backyard with your barbecue, um, or on a hike, whatever, the lake. You know, we're going to take Monday off, but we'll remind you that tomorrow um, because it's Memorial Day. And... Um, I am going to leave you with these three things. I have um, three important announcements, guys. You you guys know this. While well, Mandy thinks about, um, actually, before I do this, Mandy, talk to us about Austin Shift Meal. Oh, sure. So um, Austin Shift Meal, I've created a nonprofit to take care of our furloughed or laid off um, hospitality service uh, hospitality people. Um, a lot of them depend had depended on getting a meal when they go to work every day, and that is no longer happening. So um, I give a restaurant 250 bucks to make 50 to 75 meals. I gather four to five meals. I put them in a bag, and they come and pick up that bag every week and they're dependent on that um and we're we have a high demand it's it's incredible um it's it's really sad what what's going on with our industry right now they need a lot of love they need a lot of help um we've been sold out i already sold out for next week um wow. so any any love that you guys can help take care of our service industry people, I would greatly appreciate. We're partnered up with the Food and Wine Alliance, um, but you can go to our website, uh, www.austinshiftmeal.com, and you can donate. Um, and we would, we would greatly appreciate helping to take care of our laid off service industry people that have, you know, taken care of us for so many years and, and can't do that right now. No, I love that idea that like, you know, we've always been taken care of by them and now is our chance to step up and take care of them. Um, guys, the the website um, to help out with Austin Shift Meal is in the comments if you guys um, would like to get involved with that. These three things while Mandy's thinking about who we're going to cheers to, um, it's Moved Mania this week. You guys know we're doing a horizontal tasting of four 2017 Moveds. That's pretty stinking nerdy and cool. We've never done anything like it before. The link, if you haven't gotten your virtual tasting pack, is right there. You need to order it and go pick it up. Guys, curbside is open from noon to 5 o'clock. So go order it now. Go tomorrow to the winery for curbside. Pick it up because you're not going to want to miss this on Saturday. going to be the perfect way to kick off. Also, because nighttime is the right time, the virtual... 8 p.m. on Saturday, okay? Not the typical 4 p.m. Number two, starting tomorrow, we are officially open for tastings for our wine club members only via reservation. Wine club members only via reservation. It's not too late to join the high society if you would like to do so. Once we start opening back up to the general public, that high society will go back on a wait list. So take advantage. Last but certainly not least, I will be right here tomorrow. It is bring a friend Friday, guys. Y'all know what to do. Hit the at sign. Type your friend's name in the comments right now. Invite them to this tomorrow, five o'clock. We are going to kick off Memorial Day weekend, right? It's the end of week nine. I am bringing on my friend Stephanie Gilbert, who is a local morning show host. So, guys, it is finally time for me to return the favor. I have been a special guest on her show for Studio 512 many times. Now, I get to play host, and she gets to be the special guest. Um, we are going to be talking about all things grilling and all the wines that you should be drinking while grilling and what to drink with those foods that you grill because it's Memorial Day and we all going to be grilling. So, that's it, guys. Mandy, who are we cheersing to today? We are cheersing to my sweet father who came over today and fixed my fence so this little one wouldn't escape anymore. So here's to my daddy, my sweet, sweet daddy, um, to help keep my baby Lucille safe and happy. No, oh, I love that. And cheers to all the other dads out there, guys. Cheers. Thanks for being here. See y'all tomorrow at five. Cheers. 
Yum, yum, yum.